Welcome back to the channel, fellow music lovers. Today, we have a Fender Jazz Bass. We picked up this lovely jazz bass at a local used music store or music go round. Um, it's fairly priced. It's a 1998 model made in Mexico Fender Jazz Bass. It was in really good shape, has one dent in it from a screwdriver tip right here, which is why I always preach, be careful with screwdrivers, you can damage something so easily. It plays really nice, it's beautiful. It was pretty grungy from being a 20-some year old guitar. So we brought it home, I cleaned it up and installed a new bridge, installed some new tuning pegs because the old ones were quite loose, and got it all up to shape. Follow along and see how we did it. Oh, but here's a good time to talk about our sponsor. Um, it's me. So. Like and subscribe. No one's going to pay me to do this. Please help me out. Thanks. So first we get the strings off and then we can begin our disassembly. Uh, began by taking the stock bridge off, loosening all the screws up and just pull it off there. Okay, notice the ground wire. Then after we did that, it's time to take off the pick guard. So you take all the screws out of the pick guard. And then, as in most cases, it was kind of stuck. You have to kind of pry it up to get it loose. And then... Then we remove the screws from the control plate so we can take it off and disconnect the wires from the pickups. So carefully pull it up out of the way. Be careful not to scratch the body as you move it around. Get a pair of wire cutters and disconnect the leads from the pickups. I could have unsoldered them, but I decided to replace the pots in this case. Uh, they were 20 some years old, a little bit gritty. You know, best option in most cases, just get some new ones. So after we get those cut loose, then we can remove the neck to make it easier to work on. Loosen up the neck screws. And as soon as it's loose, pull the neck straight up out of the joint. Don't try to pull it away from the guitar. It has to go straight up and out of the body. And then remove the pickups. The screws were fairly worn so be careful make sure you have a good screwdriver tip so that you don't you know, tear the screws up any worse and then pull the pickup out pulling the wire through and removing the foam spacer then i took a little bit of uh it's carnauba wax mixed with still water uh, and you take and just get the grit and grime off of the face of the guitar there's so much dirt just kind of ground into places underneath the bridge underneath the pick guard so it's good just to clean it off with a soft cloth, a microfiber, or a terry cloth towel. Then I proceeded to clean the polish and other assorted grit out of the cavities just because I plan on keeping it. I wanted it to be nice. So, okay, moving to the neck, take the spring, the string guide off, pop out the ferrules for the, uh, for the tuning pegs. And then remove the tuning pegs. They have four screws each. Just need to loosen those off and take them out. The ferrules should be snug, almost a press fit, and these are so loose they would just fall out of the face of the guitar. So now we'll polish the body. I like Mother's three-step system. It consists of a polish, a micro polish, and a finishing wax. And uh, here we go. The polish helps to remove any scratches and gouges and bring up the finish on the guitar. And then the polishes and the wax help to protect. Okay, moving on to the neck. The frets were a little worn in some places and pretty corroded, so I decided to use a sanding block to sand them down. That neat sanding block I just received from my dad. It's pretty cool. It flexes to actually to the curve of the fretboard, so you get to do a really nice, even job. Um, we're not trying to sand the frets down. We're just trying to make them level and even. So using light pressure, like I said, contouring to the shape of the fretboard, we polish the frets down. There was a high grain and you could feel the edge of the inlays at the 12th fret. I didn't care much for this. So using 1500 grit sandpaper, I leveled it off. First going across the grain to help bring down the uh, actual high spots. And then going with the grain to remove the scratches. After getting most of the scratches down with the 1500 grit, I switched to finally polishing with 3000 grit to finish off. So then we check a, take a fret rocker and see if we have any high frets. And the idea with the fret rocker is to move it across three frets and try to rock it. If it does rock, one of the frets is higher than one in the middle. And then you'll need to level it back down. But luckily for me, this fretboard was good and level from end to end. 
Next, we finish our leveling job by moving on to using fret erasers to polish the frets. Always remember to detack masking tape. It's much stickier than people give it credit for. It can rip the finish or the wood out of a fretboard. Okay, after carefully protecting the wood with the masking tape, we get the fret erasers, starting with the uh, coarsest one, 180 grit, uh, and simply just rub it at a 30 to 45 degree angle across the fret, taking off any excess scratches and removing any corrosion. And then after you've rubbed it on the angles on both sides, uh, do it flat across the top a little bit to make sure it's good and level. Next, you move up to the 400 and do the same thing again. And lastly, polish it off with the 1000. Okay, I decided to use actual lemon oil on the fretboard because this is such a nice base. And, I've, you know, after seeing lemon oil used over the years and hearing how good it was, I wanted to compare it to actually using furniture polish as I usually do. So here we go. We drizzle some on the fretboard and spread it around as you do kind of paying extra attention anywhere that looks dry or anywhere that you know appears dirty as you can see the towel was getting dirty pretty quickly which i was surprised with i thought i had cleaned the fretboard fairly well to start with so it's probably worth the time expended to oil the fretboard and you know maybe once a year when you're doing a string change uh, and polishing the frets as well just kind of a nice yearly you know refresh for your instrument so okay then we're going to move to installing the new tuning pegs. Uh, 40 bucks online, not a bad deal. Uh, first, you have to install the ferrules. The ferrules that fit were a little snug, which is what you want. At first, I thought maybe they were the wrong size. It was so hard to get in this hole. But after trying the other one, it became obvious that, no, this was the correct one. So go ahead and force it in there. When I say force, I mean you should be able to use finger pressure to get them started. Uh, if you can't, you may need to ream the hole slightly. I was afraid I may have to ream the hole on the uh, E-string, but I was able to get it started. And then using a dead blow hammer or some other, like a, a rubber mallet, uh, you want to push the ferrules down flat. And there, get, get it seated. Okay, looks good. And we'll install the new tuning pegs. Basically, just install the four new screws, being careful, like I said, not to let the let the screwdriver slip and stab the guitar or uh, yourself even. Uh, screwdrivers can cut you. So, after we get those installed, we can move on to the next step. I decided to replace the pots because they were 20 plus years old and a little bit gritty. So here we are unsoldering the old cables and reattaching some new ones. Um, I decided at some point that it'd probably be easier to actually just unsolder the whole thing first instead of trying to do them one at a time like that. Uh, it was soldered a little unusually to begin with. So as we remove the wires here, um, wasn't too hard to do. And remove the connection from the input jack. Okay, and I'm going to reuse the capacitor. Um, guitar capacitors are relatively low voltage and don't wear out like capacitors that are used in electronics. So unless the capacitor is leaking or doesn't sound right, generally just keep it. So holding on to it here with a pair of pliers to hopefully keep from getting it too hot. And we take it off. So next, we will remove all the components from the control plate so that we can polish it up. It'd probably be easier just to replace it, but in this case it didn't need it. It was only slightly pitted and had a little bit of scratching, so a little bit of polishing with the chrome polish will bring it right out and make it look like new. So after we got the components off, here it is, and you see it's not terrible. Um, backside's worse than the front, actually. So take a little bit of chrome polish. Uh, I like Mother's, um, Brasso works. There's quite a few metal polishes you could use. So put a little bit on a soft cloth and smear it around and basically just work it into the finish. Um, you're trying to get anything out of the finish and also take the scratches down. So, you know, work several different ways, polish at it for a while. Um, I did the front and the back, as you can see. And after you've got it all kind of polished up, go and wipe it down and you can see, it doesn't look too bad at all. Not quite like new, but it looks pretty good. So here we'll install our new potentiometers. There we go. 
washers on there and install the nuts. You want to make sure when you do this that you try to put the right side up on the washers and the nuts. They actually do have a prettier side to them. And then tighten them up with a ratchet or with a wrench. You want to make sure you get them pretty tight. Um, they do provide the ground through the control plate. So making sure you have a good connection is always a good idea. Anyone that thinks a ground wire would work better in this situation than the actual control plate, uh, I hate to tell you, after working on cars for years, a giant piece of metal like that is a much better conductor than a 22 gauge piece of wire for your negatives for your ground. So um, just make sure you have good tight connections by getting everything good and tight. A loose potentiometer is one of the surest ways to destroy the electronics on a guitar. All right, here we re-solder all the connections, starting with the input jack. Working our way back, we reattach all the leads, and finally we re-solder the capacitor onto the circuit. Here you go. Okay, it's time to get this thing all put back together. Let's get the ground wire back in for the bridge. Here we go, pull it through, spread it out a little bit before we mount our new Godo bridge on here. Found this online for $40, I believe from Solo Guitars in Canada. Nice high quality brass bridge, good quality chrome on it. All heavy construction. So, we'll get that screwed in. Then we can move to reattaching all the electronics. You wanna make sure you get the screws good and tight. A bridge takes a fair amount of vibration and the screws will come loose. So the pickups were disgusting. So let's get them cleaned up a little bit. I like using back to black. Like I said, I like mother's products. It's a pretty good plastic polish and cleaner. So just kind of rub the grid off here. That's the one thing about old instruments. There's always more dirt and grit than you'd ever imagine when you start taking them apart. So. Take some of the clean, clean some of the grit off the face of the pickup. You want to be careful with pickups. Uh, if you accidentally break one of the wires, it's really hard to re-solder the tiny wires that are in the coils, and it will never probably sound the same. So always be careful with pickups. Okay, get it back in its space, but I forgot the spacer. So here's the foam. These are a little worn out and I probably should have replaced them with springs and in the future I, we will go back in and probably do that. So and then tighten the screws down, just get them even. Get a good starting point for when you put the base back together. Now we'll reinstall the pick guard which was cleaned with a little back to black as well. Came out quite nice. Put the screws in. I replaced the screws with some new ones. The old ones were a little scored up, some had some rust, so makes for a very nice install when you replace the screws. Here we are attaching the pickup leads, um, the hot leads for the neck and then the bridge pickup. And lastly, we attach the grounds. I'd like to attach all the grounds on a jazz base to the output jack, just the easiest. And you know, you have a consistent ground that way. And carefully push the wires into the cavity to make sure they're not in the way of the jack or getting screwed un underneath the actual plate between the body. So, and then put the screws in and we test to make sure the pickups work. Or actually, I haven't put the screws in yet, just testing to make sure the pickups work. So, plug it into an amp and give it a tap. It should give you a loud pop through the amp. Then we put the screws in. Again, making sure to get them tight, but not over tight. Again, a base takes a lot of vibration as part of what it is. So you want things to be tight, but then again, you're not trying to strip anything out. So, and then we reinstall the knobs. I like to set them so that when they're turned all the way up, you look down and the tin is looking at you, you know, it's all the way up. Um, other people have different ideas. They like the volume knobs that all match face to face or be level when they're all the way up or be level when they're all the way down, but I like the tin pointing up. So, okay, we're gonna reinstall the neck with our beautiful new Fender logo neck plate. The original neck plate was a little scored up. Didn't have the F on it. I 
like this guitar quite a bit, so I thought I'd go the extra step and put the nice Fender logo plate on for 10 bucks. So make sure you get your neck screws fairly tight as well. It's very important for neck angle and just general overall tone. And there you go, the finished product is really quite lovely, I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, really nice finish, sounds really good, plays very well, and probably worth every penny. So it's really worth the trouble to go out there and try something like this. So if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and see you next time.